Switching Project. Welcome back. To Adelaide, where two blokes in balaclavas were arrested at the garage where this guy works. And while he's a mechanic, it turns out he knows a thing or two about how TV works too. Uh, it's pretty obvious what they're up to lingering around at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, we're in balaclavas on main roads, so no one's intentions are good. And when they found the bag, it had knuckle dusters in it. What does that tell you? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it looks like they're out to, uh, to get a few free items, by the sounds of things. And uh, if they weren't going to get him, they would have hurt someone. Yeah, that's a bit crook. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, you? Yep, hopefully you can cut the shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> you are hired, sir. <laughs> Staying in Adelaide now, and football may be the world game, but gay representation on the pitch is near invisible. Only eight male players have come out, almost all after their playing days ended. Today, 21-year-old Adelaide United player Josh Cavallo has made history, and I spoke with him just before he came out to his teammates. Josh, thanks for joining us tonight. How are you feeling about the big announcement? Uh, I'm excited, but <laughs> very nervous, because it's a secret that I've hidden for a very long time. I've got a lot of mixed emotions <laughs> right now. I haven't been my authentic self for the last six years because I was scared what people would think of me. You said you haven't been your authentic self. Who are you? Um, I'm Josh Cavallo. Um, today I'm proud to publicly announce that I'm gay. Um, it's something that I have kept from my family, uh, from my peers, from my friends. Um, and it's a very long journey that I've been fighting personally and um, I'm ready to take that next step and I'm comfortable to be open about my sexuality. What made you come out now? Um, the fear of not being myself with time ticking past. I think that, you know, I've spent six years in the darkness and um, it's really affected my mental health and I really want to send a message out to all the other kids out there that are struggling the same way I did and to show that there's no need to hide, there's no need to be someone you're not. Um, being exactly who you are is perfectly fine and I want to show that through the world of football, you know, that everyone's accepted no matter who you are. Josh, that is such a, a beautiful sentiment. It feels strange that this is something that you even have to announce. Football is a culture that is uh, very old fashioned. So I do believe it is the right time to welcome something like this. And um, I'm very proud and happy to announce myself to be the first current active gay male professional footballer in the world. So um, I hope that by me doing this, I can inspire others in the future. I am sure you will, Josh. Why do you think it is so hard for footballers to come out? I think because everyone thinks you have to be physical, you have to be masculine. Now that there's an opportunity for myself to come out to the world, I do think that there's going to be other people in following my footsteps. I'll be very proud and honoured if I can help just one person out in the world that is struggling with the same thing that I did. You said you look up to Thomas Beattie, a pro footballer in the UK who came out last year after he had retired. What kind of inspiration has he been for you? He's been a phenomenal role model to myself, you know. I reached out to Tommy and within minutes he got back to me. He was living the exact same life as mine. I didn't really need to explain myself to him because he understood. He understood what it was like having to live a life of lies. And that just touched me a lot. So um, he's a brother to me and he's going to be a lifelong friend for me. You've written about the darker times though over the last six years. Can you take me back to the night where you'd won the Rising Star Award? You should have been on this almighty high and you got home and you just felt incredibly sad and alone. I felt a, a feeling of numb, you know. I wasn't happy. I was, I was sad. I was disappointed because it was such a great achievement to get. Yeah, football was amazing for me, but there was a whole other aspect of my life no one knew about that was terrible. Something happened that night that it was time I said, you know what, I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to be myself. I want to be happy, just like everyone else. Six years is such a long time for you have to live a double life. Yeah, look, it was very exhausting. Um, I'm trying to perform at the best of my ability as well. So trying to live 
lies and come to training every day and make sure I give it my best. It was very difficult, it was very hard. I just mentioned to Carl today, my head coach at Adelaide, saying like, after I told him I felt like I was so much lighter and on the pitch I could think freely and it was just amazing. Like, I, I never thought that this day would come. Gosh, you're already an awesome player. With this weight off your chest, watch out, world. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited for this season and what I can bring to the team. You know, it's, it's taking me to a, a new different level being able to think freely. So um, I'm very excited for the season ahead. It's only around the corner too, so it's perfect timing. Over the years, you would have had to have some uh, challenging conversations in locker rooms, I'm sure. Can you talk us through some of those conversations that you were having to navigate? Often I'll be found on my own and the boys would think, oh, he doesn't want to socialise or something like that. That wasn't the issue. The issue was I was just exhausted of having to lie and I didn't really want to get caught up in my lies that I was telling. You know, normal conversation talk like, who you're seeing or who's your missus. That's just normal to happen in the locker room and people don't say that to offend you. They just don't realise that, you know, what's going on in your life. They are my brothers at the end of the day. This is my Adelaide family. So I don't want to lie to them anymore and I feel like I'm already happier with how my teammates reacted. Do you think there'd be other young gay men who want to play football but, but are because they're fearful? Definitely. I, I, I couldn't tell you how many people would have stopped playing because they were just scared or they were feared to, um, you know, crack it at this level and, and be seen as someone they're not. I came very close to stop playing football because I thought, you know, it just doesn't, I just don't fit the glove. You know, on the pitch, I love it, but out of the pitch, you know, I didn't fit in. I'm really excited how my coaches reacted and my peers and my teammates, you know, I really thought that they would be funny about this, but you know what, they wrapped their arms around me, they gave, gave me the biggest hug and they just said they're really proud of me. So that made me very happy on the inside and it made me almost think like, why have I taken this long to come out? What would you say to younger Josh who was sitting there in those darker times wondering what the future looked like? I would say, hang in there. Um, one day this is all going to be gone, you're going to be happy, you're going to have the biggest smile on your face and all your worries are going to go away. Look at me now, I've come such a long way and I couldn't be prouder to announce that today I'm gay. So um, yeah, it's, it's a very exciting journey that I'm going to begin and I'm ready for it. How what a great amazing story, to yeah. be the first, but also how sad. Like, how sad that it's now that it's the first current player and that there are so many people who've gone before that have had to wait until their career is over because they're worried about the risk or the backlash or the judgment. You know, this is exactly what should be happening and we should have, but you know, we should be celebrating people to be exactly who they are. Like, this is amazing. Yeah, so, and, so good. And Josh, is, he looks like a smiley kind of guy, oh. but that smile, that, that glow is coming from somewhere different than it was, you know, probably two weeks ago. He said to me, uh, it's like his freedom day. He oh, said, yeah, it's so. my freedom day, that's how he thinks about it. I wonder if the stuff that will make the biggest difference is actually the footage of his teammates. Mm. Mm. Yeah. The acknowledgement. It, yeah, yeah, there's something really, there's something going on there. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. All the best, Josh. Okay. That is it for us tonight. A big thanks to Rage for being here. The Bachelorette Bye. is up next here on 10, and you can catch more Project 6.30 tomorrow night. Good night.